So we are going to talk about operator overloading this, this today and understand what they are. But before we, we do such a thing, we need to understand the lingo, the, the buzzwords of operators and, and understand exactly what do we mean when we are talking about operators and, and all the aspects of the, of the, of the concept. Um, when we are talking about operator, operator is a, it's like think about it as, as an arithmetic operator that you're using in any uh, mathematical thing, okay? So I'll demonstrate a general operator. If you see, I write it over there, I use an at sign because at sign is not an operator. Because it's not an operator, I'll use it as a sign of a general thing for any operator. So, and in here, I use an operator like this. There is no operator with that thing. So I'll just do it like that. So when I say it means I have an operator with A and B, okay? So when I write something like this, this is the operator. So this is, this is the operator. And these are what we call operands. Okay? An operator and an operand, okay? So what is an operator? Operator is an operation that is happening on operands. And as a result, this operator returns a value or whatever, state value, whatever it is. So that's how an operator work, okay? You give operator two things and it returns something to, to you as a return value. That is an operand and an operator. Anybody have any problem with that? Are we all okay with that? So we know what an operator is, we know what an operand is, right? So, We have two major types of operators, binary operators and unary operators. A binary operator, it doesn't mean that it works with bits. A binary operator means an operator that, that has two operands, okay? So when I write, when I create an operator and I write two things over here, this is now a binary operator, an operator that accepts two operands. All operators may and may not return values. All the operators already existing in the library of C++, they return values. There is no operator that doesn't return a value, which means any operator can be evaluated as something. It returns a value, okay? Keep that in mind. So binary operators, they accept two operands and they return a value. This Type, these type of operators, so an example for this is A plus B, oh. right? A minus C, I don't know, X greater than Y. These are all binary operators. The first one returns the sum of the two. The second one reduces A by C and returns the value. And the other one returns true if x is greater than y. Are we okay with this? Okay? Now, these operators we call, they're like, in, so we have two major categories, but the first category has two subcategories. The binary operators who have side effect and the binary operators who do not have side effect. These three operators that I showed you over there, plus, minus, and greater, they do not have side effect. What does it mean? It means the values of the operands remain intact afterwards. They don't change. They remain the same. However, if I write A plus equal B, this plus equal has an op side effect. They change the left operand. Okay? So this one has side effect. This one has side effect. 
This one has side effect. These operators, they have side effect. So an operator with side effect is an operator that can change the value of one of the two operands. The fact that they all still return values return this, remain the same, which means I can take the value of this thing and put it in something, whatever I want. So the, the, the whole, so this plus still returns the sum, correct? This one still returns the sum, correct? This one doesn't have a side effect, that one has a side effect. All of those things, they still have values. Are we okay with this? So, category number one. Binary operators, they have two operands, they have two categories. Category number one, they don't have any side effect, which means the operands remain the same after the operation is done. Category number two, however, is the one that uh, it has side effect. In our case, the left operand is being affected. All right? But we don't have, a, we don't have any example for the right hand to be affected in the already existing operators that we have. All right? Are we okay down to this point? Any thing that is vague down to this point? Nothing's vague? Okay. So category number two, unary operators. The unary operators, they only have one operand. Unary operators, they only have one operand. And they return a value. Minus A plus B not C, these are all binary values, okay? And also, unary operators fall in two categories. The first category is all the normal operators that you have. They don't have any side effect, okay? And then we have another one that is unique, okay? Which is plus, plus, and minus, minus. We don't have that one in math. So you can have something like you can have something like plus, plus uh, A, minus, minus C, right? That, those actually have side effect. These binary operators actually change the value of their, of their wrapper. Are we okay with this? So, this one is no side effect. And this one, correct. And these ones, they have side effect. Correct. So down to this point, we had two different categories, main categories of operators, binary, unary. Each one had two different ones, right? Now, these two operators that we have that they actually have side effects, they are awkward. Why they are awkward? Because they have something that you don't have in math. These are all prefix operators. They all come before the operand, correct? We have two awkward operators that are unary and they come after operand. They are exception to regular things. Only C and C++ have it. And that's like this, right? x plus plus and y minus minus, right? So remember, these are unary operators too, but we call this one prefix, unary operators, and these are postfix unary operators. Okay? Are we okay with this? These are all the things that we need to know. These are all the buzzwords we need to know about operators before I start teaching you what an operator overload is. Okay? So, one last review. Two major categories. Binary, unary. All operators return values. All operators that are, that are already existing in the C library, C, C++ library, they return values. Binary, Unary. Binary operators, two operands. 
they may have side effect or may not have side effect. They all return values. Unary operators, okay? Two major categories, the ones that have no side effect and only two of them that they have side effect. None of the others do, okay? The ones that are in the library, okay? The prefix library that's plus plus and minus minus, it goes into two categories. These cannot be postfix. Only plus plus and minus minus can be postfix. So that's the only exception for the uh, unary operators. Now, why can't I have, because I have plus plus as postfix, why cannot have minus as postfix? or not as postfix, or plus as postfix, because of the meaning of the word overload. And I'll explain in a few seconds. So are we okay with all these things? All right, so let's wipe it out. Mm -hmm. The value itself, yeah. So A will have the negative value of C. Of which one? Minus equals C? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Nobody ever said something. I just, sorry, it was just, my apologies, my apologies. Plus equal, uh, yeah, yeah, so that's correct. Okay, so my apologies. That was just, yeah, me, my hat. I, I never say what I write, so that was my mistake. <laughs> Anyways, thank you. So if I actually write it like this, I have two operators over here. I have one unary operator. This unary operator will return a value, passing it to a binary operator. The binary operator's job is to get that value, set it to A, and return it. What's the point of it? It's a mathematical operation. Yeah, it doesn't do anything, but it is, because it has to be. Because I have minus A, I need to have plus B too. The definition of plus says it doesn't do anything. But the fact that it's an operation by definition, a mathematical operation, it exists. Okay? But don't worry, you can change all that. <laughs> so, first of all, let's understand the meaning of overload. Can anybody tell me what is the meaning of overload? When we are when we are overloading, uh, when we are overloading a function, what does it mean? Same uh, function name and different meanings. So the same function and different meanings. Do we understand the same function, different meaning? Are we all okay with this? I want to get get to somewhere. What do you want to say? Uh, same function, different parameters. Same function, different parameters. That's beautiful. Yes. Correct? So essentially, I have the name of the function is the same. The parameters it receives are different. Correct? When I say two objects are, when I say, I don't know, these two guys look alike, or those two guys look alike. When I do something like that, when I do a comparison between two things, two objects are necessary, correct? It's the same thing with overload. When I say a function is overloaded, first a function must exist, then I have to change its meaning to a new one, Therefore, the second one becomes the overload of the first one. Do we understand this? Okay? It doesn't make any difference. This function is overload. You have to say, overloading what? Overload needs something to overload. Otherwise, there is no overload. You just create a new function. Are we are okay with this? So, we can overload all the operators in C++ for them to have new meanings. But for that, 
you need to have the operator first. I cannot make the at sign to become an operator overload because at sign is not an operator. Got it? So all operators can be overloaded except with some exceptions. Go read the notes, okay? But to overload an operator, you need to have it first. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? I would like to, uh, we have two types of operator overloading. We have object-oriented operator overloading, and we have non-object-oriented operator overloading. What is the difference between an object-oriented function and a non-object-oriented function? Can anybody tell me? No, if I say this function is object-oriented and this function is not, what does it mean? Thank you. So one function is a member function, the other one is a standalone function, okay? In reality, like object-oriented languages, fully object-oriented languages, not C++. C++ is hybrid. C++, you can write a fully non-object-oriented program in it. The fact that it has a function called main that doesn't belong to any class, like those people who are object-oriented Critics, they say C++ sucks because the start of a language is not object-oriented, which I disagree, but yeah. So because it has a function called main, like if you go to Java, in Java you need to have a class and you have to make the main object to be a member of a class and you've got to say that is supposed to start everything. And C++ would say no, main doesn't belong to anything and it starts everything. So you make everything in the main. Are we okay with this? So a non-object, so for operators, I can identify operators in two different ways. I can have it non-object oriented and object oriented. Because this is an OP class, I'm going to start teaching you the object oriented version of it. And then after we're done, we go to non-object oriented. What does it mean? First, I'm going to teach you how to overload an operator as a member function to make the operator member of a class. And after we are all done and learn that, then I'm going to teach you how to create non-object-oriented operator overloads, which means operators who are not member of a class. We call them helpers. To just not to carry the guilt of creating standalone object, if standalone uh, uh, functions, we call all the functions who are not members helper operators, helper functions. A helper function is a function that is not a member of a class, but helps the class do what it's supposed to do. We call those helpers. Are we okay down to this point? All right. So, so, let me see, I just looked at myself, it's scary. All right, so. Let's start. I'm going to give you, I'm going to start with an example. Yeah, I always use this example because it's just an easy thing. And I don't want to go through, like, show you something with dynamic memory allocation and all those. So I'm going to go do something very simple. So when I'm creating this, don't think it's going to, like, make lots of sense. And the thing that I'm making you, there is a reason that I'm doing this. Is I'm just teaching you syntax and showing you how you can overload an operator. The real examples come later, okay? I'll try to make it make sense as much as I can, okay? So be able to see what do we have. We need uh, this one uh, at the end of the class. Are we good with this? Visible? How about now? Too short, too small, or it's good? It's good? It's bigger, even bigger. Is it good now? Okay. <laughs> All right. And let me pause before I continue. I have to do something here. This say I have a class called container. Container's job is to hold something, contain something. Okay, so that's a container. So I'll create a class container. Are we okay with this? Class, oh, 
class container. My container has a capacity. You can fill it up to certain thing, right? So it's a capacity that it has. And I won't want to go with in the detail. I'm just going to put some integer value. Let's say, it's, let's say it's in CCs or in liters, whatever you call it. doesn't matter. So I have integer capacity. Are we okay with this? Now, you have a container. It has a capacity, 250 cc's, for example. This, this is a container, and it's 250 cc's of coffee. I think this is like 400, but hey, let's call it 250, okay? But the amount of coffee that I have in here is a value. So the volume of coffee in here is a varying thing. It's not like a capacity that it changes. So, so in here, I'm going to have integer, and I'm going to call it volume. So obviously, the volume of the material inside that container cannot exceed the capacity. Are we all OK with this? The reason I'm doing this is because I want to create something that's just not, just not a normal number. I want it to mean something. So, and I'm going to create this inline. Later on, you can separate it into modules. What is inline? What does it mean when I say I want to make it inline? Meaning past. Who knows? You already answered. Who knows what is in line? Who actually read the notes once? Yeah, I'm not creating H file. The methods, you're laughing because you didn't study, did you? OK, it means the methods are within the class. I'm not putting it outside. OK, I want to, I'm, I want to be quick. I, I'm just creating everything inside the class. Later on, you can separate it into modules if you want to. Are we OK with this? All right? Don't make me have quizzes every day, OK? <laughs> All right, please be mature and study. OK, so, so obviously, I'm going to make this public. And a question came, do we make all the member variables, member variables private, and all the methods public? Is that a true statement? Do we make all the member variables, all the attributes private, and all the methods or member functions public? Is that a true statement? It's absolutely wrong. It all depends on business logic and what makes sense. Sometimes you need an attribute to be rarely, but you need an attribute to be public. And very much every time you need some functionalities to be private, things that people don't need to do, but your functions need to, to use. OK. So, so I'm taking the opportunity to touch everything as I'm going through. So let's create the con uh, container constructor. So we know that I can pass a. Uh, uh, a volume to it, so integer volume, that's the amount of things that I'm going to put in here, and a capacity, okay? But I'm going to say by default it's 250 cc's of capacity, uh, so uh, if they don't mention it, that's 250 cc's. Are we okay with this? Any problem down to this point? So now if I actually want to set this thing to, to work properly, I'm going to say, uh, when I actually want to set this, I'm going to get the volume. And if the volume is greater than the capacity, then I'm going to set the volume to minus 1. To minus 1. And we assume that user is, I don't want to use unsigned integer. Let's assume user is saying they're not going to return any, give me any negative values. Okay, it's just, I'm just putting some example over there. So that volume minus one sets it to a safe empty state. Are we okay with that? Okay. Obviously, would have been a nice thing to put this thing actually in set function to, to recall the set. So, if I would have written this thing, I would actually say, remember I told you, don't ever return void from now on. So even if you see in a workshop, they give you a function that returns void, you can simply return the reference of the object just in case. So instead of void in here, I can say, never said that before? Why you looked at each other like that? OK, so void set volume. So I'm setting the volume, OK? Now in here, I'm oh, integer volume. And I'm going to do it like this, OK? So that's the thing. And 
as a matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna even bring the capacity over here. The heck with it. So I'll do it like this. So I'm gonna have over there, and I'm gonna say over here, uh, set volume uh, and capacity. Okay? So what I was saying is that when you have void, it's not a bad idea to do this. This is kind of what I usually do. This gives me an option to be able to cascade it if I want to. Because it's void, it's not returning anything. It's, it's, it's useless. Why don't I just return the owner in case I want to reuse it, right? Not a bad idea. Anyway. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? No? Loud, please. I have to hear you. Oh, yes, it's M volume return minus one. That's right. M volume returns minus one. Otherwise, it's going to be so after, after doing all these things. So if everything is okay, then I'm going to say over here else, I'm going to say M volume is set to uh, uh, volume. And uh, no matter what, I'm going to set the capacity to capacity. Is it better now? OK. OK, so now my set is working and it's setting, so I don't have to look at its uh, constructs. And hopefully, everything's good. So I'm setting. I want to be able to display the object. So what I do, now this is something, the rule that I'm establishing now. As of this moment, when you are creating a display thing and nobody tells you what, you always receive and return for a display an O stream. That's the rule for it. Why? Because the sky is high. You're going to find out after the midterm when we learn about virtuality and stuff. It comes in handy. But get used to it from now on, from now. So in here, if I want to display something, you don't say void display anymore. As soon as anything has to do with displaying, you return O stream reference display, and you, re uh, you return, and you receive O stream reference, uh, uh, call it uh, output or, uh, I don't know, um, OS, and set it to be defaulted to C out. And you use O stream. You use that OS to show everything. It's a new name for C out. It doesn't make any difference. So if, if they don't provide it where to print, it's going to get C out. So it's going to print it on C out. But later on, we're going to learn if they may use uh, OStream's children to use it. So this, gonna, this can adapt. But just use it from now on. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll learn the benefits later on. So now in here, I'm going to say OS. It's exactly like C out, no difference. And actually, uh, yeah, OS. And in here, I'm going to say um, um, should we put something? What is the content of this thing? I think we should put what is the, you know what? He says, no, I'm not going to put it. So I'm going to just say container. I'm going to put over here C, which means it's a container, and it has uh, M volume and out of M capacity. M capacity. And I'm not going to go to new line. I'm going to say return OS, OK? And this only happens if it is not empty. So in here, I'm going to say uh, Boolean is empty. Obviously, I'm not going to change the content of the Object and in here I'm going to say a return m volume being greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero, which means it's not in a safe empty state. So I'm going to say over here if not is empty, is empty, then actually show this. And obviously the display is not supposed to change the object too, so that's going to be a cost. Are we okay with this? All right? So very uh, simple thing to go through. Uh, now I'm going to actually write the main and run it and see how it works. Uh, there's, I can actually test this now. So in here, I'm going to create int main void. 
oh, not void because we are not in IPC, return zero. And in here, I'm going to say container C, and I'm going to put over here, say, 200 uh, cc's in a, in a liter. So this, this container is a liter. And I'm going to say c.display, uh, and I'm going to go to new line. Are we OK with this? Because I'm not specifying what, it's going to receive the C out. And therefore, it's going to print it on C out. OK? And as a result, the output of this beautiful program of mine will be, three years later, nothing actually. Let's see why. What mistake did I make? OK. So in here, I'm setting the container. So it comes over here, gets the volume that is 200. Capacity is 1,000, goes to set. Volume is greater than capacity is not. Volume will be set to 200. Capacity will be set to 1,000. It comes over here, goes to display. Is it if, oh, sorry. If it's, if it's negative, it's empty. I put it reverse. That's why. Okay. So now we're going to come over here. All right. And, and it is not empty, so it's going to display. So it actually works this time. <laughs> okay. So we have 200 of 1,000. Are we okay with this? Any questions down to this point? For this little cutesy thingy we created? All right. What if I want to pour some coffee in this? So I want to add some, some content to this thing. So what do I do? I create a function called add. That's what I learned from IPC or whatever we have. So we create functions. We know all, how all those things work, so I'm minimizing them. So you know how display works, container, and everything works. I'm just going to create the add function. So in here, I'm going to say void add. And in here, I'm going to say int volume. So I'm going to add some volume to this thing, right? And what I'm going to do over here is simply say set volume because I volume because I already created that one, right? But the problem over here is that's going to set the capacity to 250, so I designed it badly. I'm going to remove that one. Volume and in here. Um, let me overload it. See, I did that, and the logic didn't fit. If I did that, it resets the volume to, uh, to 1,000, so that was wrong. So what I will do over here, I will overload it. Yeah, I can do it, but pardon me? We'll talk about it later. That's future, not now. OK? So if it's only volume, then I, don't, I, I do not need to do anything. So this becomes M capacity. And the syntax is the same. It's just a single volume. And that is removed, which is fine now. OK, now in here, I can actually say set. So this add will set to volume plus M volume. Are we OK with this? So it gets the current volume, adds a new volume to it, and that becomes whatever it is. Are we okay with this? And that adds. And as I mentioned before, don't do void, okay? That makes it easier if I, if it's void, I always return this. So I can have cascading effect, as I mentioned, okay? So now in here, I can display it. Now I can say c.add. Now I'm going to add, let's say, 75 cc's to this. And I can simply just say display now, so I don't have to go to the new line. Are we okay with this? That's the re that's the cause of that thing that I have done, returning this. Are we okay with this? So if I run this program now, I'm going to walk through it. First, I'm going to show it to you. It's going to be 275. Are we okay with this? I added 75 cc's to this thing. Any problem with this? So let's walk through it. <laughs> program starts. We already know how the constructor works. We already know how the display works. So those things are fine. I'm not going to walk through the things I knew. Now I'm going to come in add. So it's going to get into add. Not there. Get into add. 
and in add, it's going to get the volume that is 75, add it to 200 that is already there. Together, the value is 275. It goes now into the set function. The volume is not more. It is 1,000, so it's good. It actually sets the volume to 275 now and returns the current object. The current object is returned, and therefore, it goes to display and displays the value, and we are good, and we are done. Are we okay with this? Anyone have any problem with this and wants me to simplify the code? No. Okay, good. So now I'm going to uh, just to, because I want it to be simplified, I'm going to remove it over here, and I'm going to say over here, C dot display. <laughs> just wanted to show you what that this thing he does over there. We are just using the previous concepts to construct. In. So we good? We okay? Now, all I'm going to do over here, all I am going to do over here is ask you, what does add looks like in math? In math, if you say C dot add 75, and it adds the value to the C in C++, what operator you would have used for it? Plus doesn't have a side effect. Plus wouldn't have changed C, right? Plus equal. Plus equal is the one that is adding to the content of the current object, right? Right? And please take a look at this. I am not changing anything. I'm not doing anything. I'm literally copying the whole thing and paste it. Did I? You see that? And now I'm going to change this to operator plus equal. Done. I didn't do anything. I just said, hey, that add function that you have used, we could have used it like this. So I can say C operator plus equal, and in here add another 50 cc's to it. And I'll go C dot display. Still the same thing, right? So if I actually run the program now, you will see that it works the exact same way. I just named it. So all these things we know it works, right? Now we come to operator plus equal. It comes to that function and gets that function, does another set and everything, and comes back and displays. Are we okay with this, people? Okay? So that operator plus equal that you see over there is the function version of the plus equal, actually, which means now because of that function, because that function means overload plus equal, I can use the non-function version of plus equal and actually do this. And the result would be the calling of the exact same function. So let's try. Now if I run the program, we know all these things work, right? We are down to this point now. I am saying plus equal. The compiler looks at the, op the, the operator. At right side, I have an integer. Plus equal and an integer, yes, it has it. It looks at the left operand. What the heck is that? Container? I don't know container and plus equal. I only have plus equal for primitive values, primitive types. Let me see if container, that is left, one actually owns a plus equal over row. Does it? Yes, I'm going to call that. So now it actually goes exactly where the other one went to. No difference. So line number 55 and line number 53 are identical calls to the same function with two different names. And that does the exact same thing. So if I actually continue running this, you'll see that the result will be 425. Are we okay with this? So all we need to learn about operators is that what is the signature of an operator in its function form? Then I can overload anything. The only thing that you lack now, you know how, low, how to overload the regular function, correct? If the function is receiving an integer, you can. And another thing with the, with the operators are that 
operators are doomed to have the same number of arguments. In a function overload, you can have a, a function that has one argument, and then you overload it, you have with two arguments, like the set function, correct? So this set function is the overload of the previous one, correct? With operators, that's not the case. If the operator is a binary operator, you're doomed to have two, operate, two arguments. You cannot have one. If it's a unary operator, you're doomed to have only one, right? So, for example, if I wanted to say, now just to show you, if I wanted to say I want to add one cc coffee to my cup, one cc coffee to my cup, how do I do it? I can actually do this. In my, in my code, I want to have something like this. Plus, plus C. And go C dot display. OK? Now, what is the operator overload for that? It's exactly like the other ones. It doesn't make any difference. So in here, I can actually write over here void operator plus plus, obviously. Uh, yeah, and, and then in here, I can simply say, I don't know, set uh, to m volume plus 1. Why am I reusing my code? Because I want it if it's, if it's because I want it to go to a, uh, safe empty is that if somebody pours more than the value that it's supposed to get. So it should set it to false. So that's why I'm reusing code. I'm not just saying volume. I could say m volume plus plus. Then my validation wouldn't have applied, right? That's why I always say reuse your code. Now in here, and that's it. So if I actually run this program now and write, run, write, write, run it right down to this point, you will see now, now I won't get an error. Because now it says it's a unary operator. Let me see if C++ actually overloaded that. Sorry, let's see if the container has overloaded that. And the container did, so it goes over there and it sets it. Right? And it comes out and now I have two. But, but if I did that, can I do this afterwards? No, I can't, because I didn't return this. OK? So again, if you are not doing anything with that void thingy, if the void is not in purpose, if you don't want to, because naturally, operators return something. Naturally, operators return something. Either you have to go by the logic, and decide what it's going to return. Maybe it's going to return the volume. You could have returned an integer if you wanted to. It doesn't make sense because when plus plus a container, you should return a container, nothing else, right? So it's the same thing. So again, logic makes sense to make this thing container and return this. OK? So <clears throat> these are the ones down to this point. I'm going to give you one more example, and then I'm going to actually talk about syntax. I just wanted to show you how easy it is. If you know what, how to over, what the signature of a function is. Now, down to this point, we understood kind of, we kind of got the message that when you are actually overloading a function, a, an, or any type of operator. If the operator, we are talking about object-oriented operator overload. We are not non-object-oriented. We are not talking about helpers. We are not talking about operators who don't have an owner. We are just talking about member operators. Those things should be avoided as much as you can. So again, you only call for a helper if you can't do it yourself. So you only create an operator that is non-member if you have no way out. Otherwise, you're just lazy. You don't want to do object-oriented programming. Remember, we are t learning C++ because it's a powerful language. Therefore, it allows us to get into 
places from back door if we need to. But you always use the main entrance, always. You always try to go in normally. And if you can't, there is absolutely no way then you're going to break a window and go in. Okay? It gives you that power. But you only do it when you need it. So, down to this point where I understand if I have A, some operator B, okay? If I have something like this, this is usually if I have, say, type A as A, and say I have type B as B. What do I mean is that A is of type class type A. Now, okay, and B is of uh, type class type B, whatever, okay? If I have something like this, okay, usually this is the thing. You have type A that has a function called operator whatever, okay, which is this one. Sorry for the awful handwriting. I decided to actually use it because I was forgetting how to write, so this is kind of a practice, okay? So operator that, and then in here you will receive the type that you have. And the return type you don't know. We can decide what to do with it. But usually that's the case. So that operator, that operator is a member of this side, accepting that as an argument. So that's the argument. This is the owner. And the return type is to be decided based on business logic of what we want to do. That's a binary operator. For unary operators, it's the same thing. So if I have type A, type B, and I have B is equal to A, then most likely the scenario is that I have a return value of type B, and the uh, operator would be actually type A that receives an operator whatever, that receives no argument. Why it doesn't receive any argument? Because it's the member of the thing. The argument is the object itself. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? So, this is what we have down to this point. Now let's go back and see based on this, how can I do something like this? How can I have something like container something like that, and I have a container <clears throat> something like that. How can I write R is set to C plus D? And at the end, I'm going to say C dot display. D dot display and R dot display. Okay, so this is what I want to create. Are we okay with this? And they're all of same type. I'm going easy. So, based on your understanding of plus, does plus have a side effect? 
No, which means C is not supposed to change, D is not supposed to change. And the result of the whole thing should be what? What should it return? What is the type of that that is returning? What is the type that it's returning? A container, right? So it should return a container, correct? So let me create that. So in here, I'm going to say container. I'm just going to write the, 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 the signature as we learned right now. Operator. And so the left side is C. C is the owner. So essentially, this is going to be it, right? So it's going to be, if I call it with function type, it's going to be C operator plus D. If you forget how to write it, this is how it is. So you're implementing that because we know that the operator version, the op function call version of the operator is this. Are we okay with this? Now let's do that. So C, so it means, so C is the owner. I don't need to mention anything in here. All I need to do is pass a container and we know we, we like to pass structures using uh, uh, reference because we don't want so I'm gonna say over here container reference right hand operator operand right operand so I'm gonna say right operand okay and to make sure D is not changed because we know it has enough side effect I'm gonna make it a constant and to make sure C is not changed I'm gonna make the whole thing constant so I'm not gonna change myself so neither left changes nor right. And this is operator plus, obviously. I forgot the plus. The compiler tries to tell me, but I'm not listening. Are we okay with this? So neither left changes, which is the owner, or right, which is the argument. Now all I need to do is to create a container and return. I cannot create a reference because I'm not returning this. This is not supposed to change. If I change this, Mission is not accomplished. I cannot add the two up, right? So I want to change. I want to return them both. So what do I do? I'm gonna say I'm gonna build a new container. So I'm gonna say container R result. The value of this thing is gonna be volume of me, right? Plus the right operands volume. And the capacity of this new container is going to be, what is it going to be? It's going to be, uh, what should we call it? Tell me. Uh, the capacity of both, right? When you add up two containers, the capacity is capacity of both. If I have 1,000 milliliters in here and 1,000 milliliters, I add them up, I have 2,000 milliliters if they're both. So that's what I'm going to create. <coughs> so I'm going to create, what do I create? I'm going to create over here M capacity uh, plus right operand M capacity. And then I'm going to return it. Correct? Right? What, 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 what? This? Okay. How much C has? It, let, let's actually, you know what? Let me just do, because it's a new concept, I'm going to save it. Uh, save the, I'm going to copy this. Copy. I'm going to say uh, 0, 1, unary and binary with side effect. So that's the first one we created. No. Um, mm. Wait a minute. So um, this is unary and the thing with side effects. So <laughs> let me paste it over here. Ignore what I'm doing right now. I'm just putting things together so I can separate the, the progress of the, of the code. So that's that one. And here is the one that we have with 
binary with side effect. So this one is binary with side effect, which is here. So I want to explain what our friend asks over here. So I'm going to remove all these and come right to this point. And I'm going to dis display everything before and everything after. OK, now I'm going to ask you the question. To answer your question, I'm going to ask you a question. How much C contains at line 66 before the operation? Look at the data. How much C contains? 200, correct? How much D contains? So what should be the result? Perfect. If you return this, what are you returning? C, correct? And C is not supposed to change. So you're returning 200, then you didn't do what you're supposed to do. Got it? OK. Again, you like to return this, but when it's needed. Don't do it always. You have to know if you need it or not. Are we OK with this? Baby steps. Baby steps. OK? Baby steps. The question was, the question was, can we not just set the volume of R and not the capacity? Because that's reality. When you have one cup emptied to another one, you cannot change the capacity of the target. That's where I wanted to go to. I wanted to do it. So you see, oops, the capacity changed. How do we fix it? He ruined it. OK? So, 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 OK, so let's, let's run it and see how it works. So I'm going to run it now, step by step going through it. So when it runs, as you see, the first one is 200, 100, and R is empty, correct? And I do C plus equal D now. So it comes over here, creates res which has garbage in it, but after it's done now, it has, what the devil happened? I thought it's going to, um, let, let me just walk through. Let me walk through, let me see if I, if I made a mistake. All right, so we come over here. Now, um, let's go inside. So that's 300, and this is 100, uh, 1,200. We set the volume. It's 300. That's that, so that's OK. So we set the volume. Everything's good. So why didn't it show it to me? Huh. Anyways, we'll find out. We just set. OK, something strange is happening here, but we'll see. Anyways, let me return it and see if it's uh, IntelliSense doing nuts stuff. Yeah, IntelliSense was doing crazy stuff. Capacity is tough. So it was actually, I don't know why IntelliSense wasn't updating, but it happened. So now if I actually run it, you will see that 1,500 became 1,200. Why? You tell me. No, 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 no. Take a look. What am I overloading here? What am I overloading here? The plot. Did I overload the assignment? That's why assignment is happening how C does it. If you want that to happen, you have to overload the assignment. If you want when you are pouring from one to another, capacity doesn't change, you can. But you have to overload the assignment. So let's do it. So this is not overloading only one thing I wanted to show you. It's not overloading only one. I am overloading two things now if I want it to work properly. So at right side, what is the result of C plus D? It's A. What is a type? What is a type of plus? It's a container. So at right side of assignment, I have container. At left side, I have container. Therefore, I create that. So in here, what I need to overload now is, uh, I don't know, R is equal to res, essentially, correct? 
So for that, it's going to be r dot operator equal res. That's what I'm overloading, right? So now in here, I have to come and say container operator equal. And does equal have side effect? Of course, otherwise, how could it set? All right? So, so now in here, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to say over here, const, but it doesn't change the right one. So const container. Yes, I wanted to come to it. Why everybody's roaring again all the time? OK, so yes. OK, <laughs> I just want to get to it. And everybody's, OK, container right operand. <clears throat> now in here, obviously, because now I want to return the whole thing, and I want to return the result, so I can actually return the, return the current one, so I will return it. OK, and in here now, I can say set right operand dot volume and not pass the capacity. Therefore, it's going to call the set function that I have that only sets the volume and won't change the capacity. Now, if I run the program, you will see that three years later, oh, stop it first, sorry. When I run the program, I'll walk through it first, but I'm going to look at Now, the, cap the capacity is not changed. You follow? OK, so let's walk through it one more time. You have no idea. I taught through the whole thing that you're supposed to do about different things using this container. So uh, you almost learned it all, all different types of member operators except one that I'm going to teach you in, in a few seconds, OK? So, so now if I actually run it, so now if I actually run it like this, um, oh, OK, sorry. I'm just going to um, let me minimize everything because I just want to come here. Let's come right down to that point. So we have those values. First, the plus operator is called. It goes over here, creates the result, returns the result. Now, result is returned. Now, the, plus, the equal sign will receive. So the right operand is now the result when you look at it. It's 1,200 and 300. Capacity of 1,200 and volume of 300. And it only receives, it doesn't care about the capacity because when you are setting, you're not supposed to. So it actually gets the value and only sets, it checks, makes sure it doesn't overflow, which it, it doesn't, and uh, it returns this, which goes to cyberspace. Nobody uses that. I could, have, I could have used something at left side, but I didn't, okay? And now it displays everything, and everything is in order. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right, so binary operators with no side effect, we did it. Binary operators with side effect, we did it. You sh Again, could I do this? Yes. If I run this program, it will still work. But which crazy person defines minus as positive? Again, it's operator overload. You can go bananas, but please don't. You have the power, but make it make sense. I could have made plus equal not have side effect. But then the person using it is going to get confused because they are used to plus equal to have side effect on left one. I could have made minus, like set the value of the other one too. So again, all these things are matter of Understanding, like for example, let me just get into it. I'll show you something else. <sighs> With containers, it's very difficult. With containers, with containers, it's very difficult because an assignment in containers is actually plus equal. 
think about it. If this container ha is half full and I set it to another container, what happens? It adds up to it, right? So again, it all, it's all the matter of business logic. If they tell you assignment is plus equal, you have to do it plus equal because it's a container. What we assume when you assign it means you first throw the first one out, clear it, and then you put it inside. Okay? That's what it does. Are we okay with this? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, first let me teach the last, because right now we did the, we did the, Binary with side effect, binary with no side effect, we did the unary operator. So for example, you want to see, a beautiful example, you want to see if the object, if the container is empty or not. All right? How do you do that? This is what I do. In here I'm going to say, in here I'm going to say, if not R, then I'm going to say, see out, this container is empty. Can I do that? Yes. Overload the not operator. Right? So what do I do? So if I want to have not R, how do I do it? If it's not R, what does logic dictates? That is R dot operator, correct? Obviously, it has to not change R, therefore it's constant, and, the, and it should return a Boolean, because it's not, correct? And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So in here, I'm going to say Boolean operator not, and in here, I'm going to say const won't change me, and in here, I'm going to say return not, or oh, return is empty. Is empty is that? No, is em no, 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 is empty is a, ha, is empty over here is a safe empty state. It doesn't mean the container is empty. Okay? That's, that's actually a beautiful example. So I would come over here and change my is empty to is safe empty. It means, or is invalid. Okay? So is empty is actually is invalid, not empty. It means that it's an invalid container. It's minus one, right? Somebody did something wrong. But emptiness means it doesn't have any liquid in it. If that's the case, now in here I'm going to say, what do I say? Return m volume being equal to zero. Right? So if the volume is zero, return true. Now. It actually makes sense. It's not going to give me an error. And if I run the program, it's going to actually tell me this container is empty. Right? Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right. Next thing. No. Then, uh, it's, then if I actually need to do it, the, the same person over here is going to say if r dot not invalid and if it's not invalid and empty, it's empty, right? Are we okay with this? Or you, you, can, you can say less than or equal to zero if that makes sense. But it's all your choice. Again, business logic. You have to see what the simulation is. One thing I have to explain to you, and you please remember, abstraction, abstract, what is abstraction? Abstraction. Anyone? Da, 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 da. No? Anyone? Abstraction? Abstraction? We're going to do the quiz one again. Abstraction? You said abstract art. You said abstract art means... Focus on what you need and throw away what you don't. Abstraction dictates what that uh, not thingy means. 
So you have to look at the game that they are playing and you are simulating a cup in that game. And you want to see if the cup is empty, what you're gonna do, how you're going to decide. What is the definition of empty? Then you're going to decide on that. So business logic and your abstraction dictates how your function works. It's such a difficult thing to simulate real world in the computer. Just in two seconds ago, we are thinking, like, which one is what? Which is empty, which is not, right? And that's reality for any simulation that you are doing. This is a simulation. Don't be mistaken, OK? Cheesy one, but it's one. Anyways, so what I want to do. All right, to see if it's OK. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so now, in here, I'm going to say, what, what did I do in here? 0, 2, this is. Uh, uh, binary with no side effect. Binary with no side effect and uh, unary, uh, an operator not. Okay? Now, <clears throat> we did plus plus, right? So what's the difference between plus plus before and plus plus after? Because <laughs> they are both they're, they both are the mem member of the thing, so how do you change the signature? They actually hit the wall on that. When they were designing it, says, they say, okay, we said unary operators, so in here we said, so we actually created it here somewhere, I think. Where is that plus plus? Did we do plus plus here? Yeah, so in this plus plus thingy, So for this, I just need one container. I don't need much. Also, oh yeah. So, so I have this, and I'm displaying now. I want to now. I want to do C plus <laughs> plus. C plus <laughs> plus. Now I want to do C plus plus, and then display the C. How do I do that? OK, so some old compilers are actually OK with this. They are still calling the other one. See? Now nah, this one didn't. Some old compilers do it. They just got to say, hey, you don't have that. But, so how do we do that? What is the thing for it? They didn't have an answer. So they came up with a, such a cheesy way to fix it. You know what they did? They said, do the same thing. So this is prefix. They say, just put an int in there for no reason. <laughs> that int doesn't mean anything. That just means postfix. And it's only for minus, minus, and plus, plus, because those are the only exceptions of operators in C++ that come, can, come, can come after. There is no such thing. So if you want minus minus to come after, if you want minus minus to come after, you need to put an int over here. So postfix has uh, an int for no reason. <laughs> uh, how, do I, how do I measure as an int as argument? As argument. With no. No argument. It's just you just put an int in there. That means, hey, this is postfix. But I have to show you something. So what does postfix do? In postfix, we when we did post, remember what happened? It happens after with postfix. So in here, if that's true, if I put over here dot display, this display, the first display should show 200, and the other one should show 201, correct? When I do that, you'll see that doesn't happen. Why? Because it's an overload. If you want it, you have to do it. You are redefining what plus plus means. But how do we do that? How do we make plus plus to happen after? The answer is you can't. You have to fake it. How do I fake it? I'm going to say, OK, you want me to send the previous thing? I'm going to fake it like this. I'm going to say, Container old is set to me. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna or 
if you don't wanna if you don't wanna do that, you're gonna say container old, and you're gonna put m volume in here and m capacity. So you create an old volume with the value that you had, and then you set it to one and you return the old one. So you're gonna make a copy and return the old copy out. Now you see the one it says 201. If I run it over here, now it actually becomes 200. <laughs> but it's not the real one. I'm returning a copy out just for the heck of it. There is no way that you can return the current one because if you change it, you change it. If you want it to look like what it does, and then to make sure that nobody makes a mistake that what you are actually sending out is the real one, you have to make sure you make it a const. Oh, you can't. Darn it. There is another way. Forget about it. Yeah, but yeah. No. No, they both change the value. This both I don't ignore what I just said. It was a stupid thing I said. Don't forget about that. Forget about that const. But you have two overloads for two different calls. So this is one C plus plus display, and this is another one. So I can go C dot display, C dot display. So plus plus, and I cannot. And by the way, I cannot say plus plus C dot display. You know why? Because dot is more powerful than plus plus. It's going to happen before. <laughs> you got it? Dot will happen to C. And what, does, what is display returning? C out. So you are saying plus plus C out. And that doesn't mean anything. To make that work, you have to put it in parentheses. Otherwise, th that doesn't mean anything. You have to say first do plus plus and then. Okay, so now if I run it, you'll see. Are we okay? Are we? Yes. Which one? Show me which one you're talking about. Receive, yeah, you can actually receive the value. So what, 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 you, what you can do is this. If this is what you mean, that's a good question, actually. Ah, listen to me. Listen to me. What is saying, what is saying, forget about display. What if I have over here container? Oh, shoot. Um, yeah, container R, and let's say I put 0 and 1,000, okay? Now I actually go over here and I say, instead of display, I'm going to do this. Um, R is set to plus plus R, C. And I display R. And in here, I'm going to put, what do I put? So in here, I'm going to say, so, uh, and in here, I'm going to say, OK, so the first one looks like it happens before. So R for the first one will be set to 200. And the second one, R will be still 200 because it happens before. Actually, it becomes 201. And then the other one is going to be, it's like integers. I know it's confusing, but it's the exact same thing within. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can do that with the other one. Yeah, oh, 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 I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, so what uh, I, I completely misunderstood. You are actually having a very good, good thing over there going. Okay, so why, what he says is that if I do plus plus C dot add 50, it's not going to be added to anything because it's a temporary object. It's going to die. You are not adding to anything. 
Yeah. So it will be added to a temp object that is about to die. You cannot, no, anything you do will change this. Yes. Yes, you can, but don't. Yes, but which one did you see that does it? See, if it, wait, again, if it makes sense, like for example, let me just explain. Like what you're saying is this. Nothing's going to happen. Okay, I'll show it to you. Let me just put a stop sign over here and bring it. So, just to show you what's going on here. Oh, this plus plus C will work perfectly. The, oh, the other one will not. This is actually this actually works. So this will add one. So it, this actually works. So if I run this, this actually will be 252. Yeah, but if I do the other one, then it won't work. So if I do this one. This one will not work. So, so now if I if I come down to here, uh oh, you're almost done, and I didn't give you a break, which is okay. <laughs> okay, what? Didn't I say two two fifteen? Two two fifteen class ends. Yeah, but 2.15, I have to pack up my stuff. So I have 15 minutes. OK. So he didn't hear me, Prof. I said, set it up for 2.15. And he did it, it did it too. But anyways, so now, if I, if I run it now, you will see that the results remain the same. That 50 will not be added. OK? It, it's added to a temporary thing that gets vanished. Yes? Yeah, but like you can do something like, like I can do this. I can, for example, so pouring one to another, let's say it's left shift operator. So let's say in here I have container, container uh, uh, R, and it has 100 and in, say, in 500, right? And what you want to do, you want to pour C into R. Uh, let's make it a little bigger so it has space for both. It doesn't go bad. So now... Let's say I want to do this, R, C. You can do that, yeah, sure. So this binary operator makes sense if I say it's going to empty the value of C. Or even it can go further. Say, for example, if it overflows, only the amount is, but I'm not going to go there, but you do it. So if I want to do something like this, simply put it up here. It's as easy as that. Simply put it up here and write R, C, correct? And then expand it. It becomes R operator C, correct? That receives a C, which means what we're going to have, first of all, it should return the contents of R, which means container's reference is, is valid. Container reference, operator. Uh, and in here, it's not constant because I want to change it. So container reference uh, right operand. And what I will do over here saying uh, set the value of me to r dot uh, to uh, r operand dot m volume. Are we adding to it? What do you want to do? Adding to it, so plus m volume, right? And then after this, the other one is empty, so I'm going to say r operand dot m vo uh, dot set to zero. So set the right one to zero and return this. So this one is pouring one container into another. Right? Something like that. Let's say we simulate that and that what happens. So now if I actually show both of them over here, C dot display. And in here, I'm going to say 
C out C container. And D dot, uh, R dot display C out R container. Uh, uh, C, it's got to be C container, R container, just to see which one is what. Now, if I run it, so C container is going to have, but now, uh, it, you know that C thingy we put over there. Let's remove that C thingy that, that is. Father, let me take that out of the, the printout because it's screwing everything up over there. Where is the display? I'm going to remove that C thingy. That's better. There we go. So now it pours from one to another. That one was 200, and we uh, poured it in. No, actually 253, and we added it to the other one, and so on and so forth. Are we okay? Are we okay? So that's that. So you can change it if you, again, if the business logic applies, you can. We don't have that in regular operators. In here we do. Are there any of Yes. Go read the documents. I forgot what it was. Uh, when you read in the operator overload, it tells you what you can. And this action is called moving, by the way. Remember what I told you. This action that you see, 78 to 82, is a logic called moving when you move data from one to another. In 3, 4, 5, that's going to mean a lot to you, that logic. Remember that, OK? Moving is a big thing in new C++. That logic is called moving. Uh, that's it. That's all the member operators. Now, all that it remains over there are non-member operators. How do we deal, how do we specify and find the signature of non-members? First of all, you can specify member and non-member. You can have a conflict between the two. So all the binary operators and all the operators that I did over here, I can do it as non-member. Awful, but I can. So careful. Something that you have already, don't think that if you do a non-member uh, overload, it's not going to conflict because they look different. They apply to the same thing. So the same operator can be applied as a regular function. I can have a function that, has an add, that is an add inside a class. It means it adds the value. Or I can have it like C language, an add function that receives a structure at left and a value at right. You can do that, right? It's the same thing over here. So careful not to have a conflict between the two. But in next, in this, uh, like uh, approximately a uh, few minutes that I have, I'm just going to quickly explain what it is. And then we'll continue uh, whatever we need to cover in the lab section as usual. OK? So a non-member, non-object oriented uh, operator, how do you do it? So if you have. TA for type A, TB for type B, if I can write it. So this is the type of the class. And TC for type C, OK? When I will have A is equal to B, <coughs> C, OK? It means the operation, the one that you want to do as a non-member is this one. It receives a B at left, which is the type B. It receives a C at right, which is a type C. And it return, returns a type A. Are we OK with this? The signature for this will be T, A, operator, T, B, B, and T, C, C. So this essentially, and as you see, it's not a member operator, which means this is the left operand. This is the right operand. And this is the return, what it returns.
But please understand, any of them could be reference or value or constant or non-constant, depending on business logic, depending on the need of your abstraction of that operator. If you want the left operand to not change, then you have to make this a constant reference. Or if you want the value being passed, you put a value. Why do we need such a thing? Why it's even needed? You need it for two reasons. First, when the left operand is not a class, what if you want to have an integer at left and a container at right? How can you make an operator plus member of an int? You can't. Int is a primitive value. It's not a class. That's number one. Number two, when you don't have access to the source code of left operand, what if I want C out to be at left side of a container so I can print it? I want my container to get printed with C out without a ridiculous function called display. I want to be able to do, I want to, I want to print my container like that. I want to have container, I want to have container A, and I want to be able to C out a, I want to do that. If I want to do that, how do I design it? Easy. C out becomes the left, right? A becomes the right. And what should it return? It should return a C out because it's supposed to continue with and L, correct? So C out will be what it returns. You do that in three seconds, and you can print your display, print your uh, container. So if I, like, just to show you the example for it, in here, if I wanted to do that, if I, uh, what, did, what did I do over here? This was, OK, this was, um, uh, what do I call this? Uh, zero, three. This is postfix, right? Postfix, fix, and a binary with side effect. <clears throat> okay, so now. I know I didn't give you a break, I'm sorry. We'll be going to be done in, in, in four minutes. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do in here is this. Instead of all these stuff, I want to, be do, I want to do this. I want to say C out, R, and L. I want to do that. I want to print the up. How do I do that? So left one, as we mentioned over here, whoop, whoop, over here, there you go. So left one will be a C out, right one, will be a container, and it should return a C out so the next end L can get printed, right? So to do that, I'll do the exact same, and it cannot be a member. So I'll put it over here. I'm going to say C out is O stream, right? O stream reference. It's operator left shift. At left side, it receives an O stream, OS. At right side, it receives a constant container reference C, right? Or right operand. Correct? And because I was smart enough to create my display so it's constant and receives an OS, all I need to do is this. Real Look, return, if I can type it, return ro.display and I pass the OS to it. Done. I'm just saying, if anybody wants to do it like that, call my display. So now, if I actually run it, it comes in here. As soon as it comes in here, it goes to that. And in here, it says, call my display. And it returns it out. And with the return value of display, the new line is printed. Or anything else. You can actually do it like this. You can say, see out the container is and whatever. <laughs> okay? 
You can do it like, like that, and it actually shows everything exactly as it's supposed to. Because at left side, it has a C out, and it returns a C out so it can be in the cascading thing. Right? I'll explain all the signature for non-members the next day we are coming in. But I just showed you how simple it is. Just know what the signature is, and you're fine. Are we OK? I told you lots of information. Did I remember? All right. All right. So please watch this again. Go through the, all the stuff. And the next time, we're going to actually create a string class. We create a string class to get rid of string copy and all those shebang. OK? So you can actually use, use your own string. OK? So we're going to create this, the, the string class of C++ ourselves. Let's put it that way. OK? All right.